What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, hey, I'm Sydney. Every single Thursday I sit down and I talk about a crime, a cult, or a conspiracy. So if that's of interest to you, please make sure to like and subscribe and tell your friends because I'm here for you every single Thursday. Last week's video was the return of True Crime Thursdays. I'm so sorry it was so dark and I just wanted to apologize. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and apologize again because today's video is even worse. That's what you expect with a true crime channel. It just, it's awful. Please remember this is just for educational and research purposes. Obviously true crime is now a form of entertainment, but I mean no disrespect to any videos that I make, no harm to any of the families. It is all out of respect and I want to make that abundantly clear. Today's video is actually, the story behind it is the reason why I got into true crime and wanting to make a true crime channel in the first place. I remember I sat down before I started my true crime in 50 states playlist before I even uploaded a video of true crime because like I said y'all have been watching me for some people. Um, I used to not do true crime. I used to do vlogs and stuff and stupid ass videos but now I've always been interested in it. Like I said I'm like getting my master's in forensic psychology. It's always been of interest. So when I first sat down this was the video I sat down and filmed and I didn't like the way I portrayed it. Now that I've been doing this a while, I feel like it's time and obviously now that I'm doing cults and conspiracies, I get to do this video. But yeah, today's video is the Ant Hill Kids and if you don't know anything about it, this is probably going to be one of my longest and one of my darkest videos. So if you're not in a good place right now and you don't want to hear about really messed up things in this case, probably one of the worst cases I've covered yet, please, as always, be kind to yourself. I totally understand if you can't watch this video and be kind to others. Yeah, I mean, I don't really have anything else to say except just prepare yourself. I will give a small disclaimer if something's about to be really bad and I know that there's a few parts of this story that is just kind of gruesome. I had to pause and stop researching for a second. If that's something you need to do, it's totally okay, but I will give a disclaimer before I say the thing. So yeah, if you're interested in this video, we'll go ahead and get started. This is Crimes, Cults, and Conspiracies with me, Sydney. Rock Terrio was born on May 16, 1947, making him a Taurus. He was born and grew up in Quebec, Canada, and he grew up with seven other siblings, and he was the second oldest child um, from all of his siblings. Rock was described as intelligent and super outgoing, but he actually dropped out of school in the seventh grade. I'm not entirely sure why. It didn't really explain a whole lot, and there's actually not a whole lot of information about Rock's childhood. There aren't any stories or anything really traumatic that help shape the events of today's case. And y'all know me from like a psychological standpoint, I really like digging in the background of what happened to make today's case happen, you know? You can't always agree with criminals, but sometimes a background can kind of make you understand why. Not giving criminals an excuse or anything, but you kind of understand exactly what it is that made that happen, you know? Basically, some of the worst criminals have some of the worst childhoods. That's all I'm trying to say. Okay, we'll keep going. Like I said, there's not a lot about Rock's childhood, but there was something that I read that their, him and his siblings, their dad would make them play this game called Bone. The game was in its entirety, basically, you would sit at a table, you would have steel toe boots on, and you would kick the person next to you as hard as you possibly can in their shins until someone would ask to stop. And their dad would make them play this game, and he would also participate in this game. Another source that I read basically said that Rock was physically abused by his father, so much that there was scarring on his internal organs. Like, really bad abuse. Rock's father was a part of this religious group called the White Berets, and he would make Rock go around to people's neighborhoods and houses and basically campaign for it, ask for donations. And Rock said that he really hated doing this. He doesn't understand why his father wouldn't do it, but this kind of sparked a hatred for religion like super early on. Rock as a teenager was very charismatic and he was also very well known. The ladies absolutely loved him for his blue eyes and he had this really nice charm. 
He would say the right things just to make them kind of have a silly little crush on him. He was the center of attention in pretty big groups, which foreshadows what happens later on. This is a quick side note. I actually did a paper on cult leader manipulation, and it was one of my most favorite papers I've ever wrote. I actually got a really decent grade on it. <laughs> this tactic of basically cult leadership is very early on in someone's life because they'll start to use their charisma and manipulation and love bombing to get people to think super highly of them. They're very attention seeking and Rock was doing this before he was even a cult leader. So it's just like red flag number one, you know? When Rock was 21, he married a girl and I literally mean girl, she was 17. Um, her name was Francine and they got married pretty fast after their relationship started. They ended up having two kids together and he supported the family because he was an artist. He would basically make these wood carvings and stuff and sell them for money. And he made a pretty decent living from this, which I wouldn't ever expect. Rock's friends explained that around this time, Rock started suffering from pretty bad physical pain, like abdominal pain, which ended up being stomach ulcers. Was this due to his father beating him as a child really early on? I don't know, it could be a cause. But he would end up having surgeries to fix this problem and then only ended up having more problems after the surgeries. Rock was diagnosed because of his surgeries with something called dumping syndrome and it's pretty much exactly what you would expect the name of that to be. Basically the food that you intake digest way too quickly so you end up having diarrhea, fatigue, um, gastric emptying and it, it can take up between 10 minutes after eating or three hours but it's just really rough it's almost like you constantly have laxatives due to this um and kind of a foreshadow again to what happens later rock really didn't trust medical professionals anymore because somebody that's supposed to help you and fix you ended up making things worse for him so he started doing research and learning medical practices that he could do on himself whenever he gets sick so that he doesn't have to go to the doctor anymore. Red flag number two. To help cope with the pain from these surgeries and from dumping syndrome, Rock fell to addiction and substance abuse and alcoholism and it was just really bad and of course with that it comes neglect and anger. He stopped selling his carvings and altogether stopped making them so he wasn't making money for the family anymore any money that he did make he would spend it on drugs or alcohol and this caused a really big strain in the family his marriage with francine obviously started to wither she was not wanting to be with him anymore then he started an affair with a lady named giselle so after around seven years of marriage with francine they ended up getting a divorce because she was just over him his substance abuse addiction and then now an affair it was just, it was over with. She didn't want to be with him anymore, which obviously we can understand. Rock eventually marries his mistress, Giselle, and starts to better his health and flip his life around, not because of Giselle, but just in general. Rock was only in his 20s at this point and knew that he had a lot of life left to him. So he wanted to, he wanted to just fix his life because he knew that he was going in the shitter, you know? Rock gave up drinking and doing drugs and started to weirdly become obsessed with religion. He was raised a Catholic, but he started to dive deeper into the Seventh-day Adventist church and he ended up becoming a member of it. And it's ironic because the Seventh-day Adventist church believes in no drinking, no smoking, you eat healthy, you take care of your body, etc. And Rock was not doing all of these things until very re recently whenever he first started going to this church. Rock started to door-to-door -door campaign for this church, which again is ironic because he hated doing that for his father, which made him hate religion in the first place. What are you doing? Whatever. Rock was very well known in this church and he started to give his own speeches, his own sermons, and gained a pretty little following from this. Red flag number three. Rock would continuously give more and more sermons, gain more and more followers, and eventually he loved that he was being in the spotlight and gaining all of this attention. And of course, when you gain all of these followers, you gain more attention, your ego becomes boosted. And that's exactly what happened with Rock. Eventually, Rock would tell his followers that God made him a prophet and he was the messenger. And so he would start telling his followers 
all of these things that God were, was speaking to him, you know, and his followers believed him. No one questioned it. They leaned on every single word he said. So this is when he says that there's a doomsday coming and they need to prepare for it. Red flag number four. But hold on, I need to know, I need to, I need to know, what is it with cult leaders always wanting something to end in death? What is it? Why do you all, why does everything have to be apocalyptic? And, and I know that that's probably just because of the biblical times, maybe, I don't know. Like if I personally was in a cult, I wouldn't, I wouldn't continue going if they were like, all in all, you're going to die. I feel like I would be in a cult if someone were to be like, you're going to be immortal. I still probably wouldn't be in a cult because I wouldn't believe them. But you know what I mean? People are like, death? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm down. No. Why? Why do people do that? Another thing that Rock would tell his followers was that, like Jesus, he was a healer and he could heal people. There was a, a guy that would follow Rock and he, I mean, he was one of Rock's followers and his wife, her name was Geraldine, and she had leukemia. And Rock told her husband, I don't, it didn't say his name, but Rock told her husband that he could heal her. So instead of her going to her cancer treatments and the proper treatments, Geraldine started to see Rock. Rock obviously does not have a medical license for this, should not be treating people. So his way of treating her leukemia and curing her cancer was by giving her grape juice and organic foods. But of course, this didn't work and Geraldine, because she had stopped receiving proper treatments at the hospital, she ended up passing away because of this. When Rock's followers heard about this and started to question, hey, like I thought you could heal people, Rock had explained to them that he spoke with God and asked why is it that she had been taken and God had told him that it was her time to go. So of course everybody was like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, he, he spoke with God. So Rock had felt this new power due to his ego being boosted and felt that he needed to overthrow the leaders of this Seventh-day Adventist church and this plan failed and he actually got like banned from going to this church. He could no longer go to this church, no longer attend it and so Rock took his followers and left. Rock had convinced these followers that he was the messenger of God, he was the prophet, and people believed this and left their friends and family and jobs behind their whole life just up and moved to follow this man. There's only a few amount of people that left the church to follow Rock, and Rock actually had the police on his case at this point because of the death of Geraldine. It didn't say exactly how they knew about it, but I'm sure that when her death was like brought to the police about how she passed, whenever they spoke with her husband, he might have said, we stopped going to cancer treatments because of Rock. I don't know. It didn't say, but Rock knew he needed to up and move his followers and him to a more like reclused type of place. Like he wanted to be recluse away from everybody. So Rock moves his followers to a very isolated place called Eternal Mountain. I don't know exactly the date of when they settled there, but I knew it was before 1979 because Rock had told them that the apocalypse was coming in February of 1979 and this place was going to help them basically prepare for this. Now, when they moved, they didn't buy houses or anything. They had to completely build their own commune and shelter from scratch while Rock sat and did absolutely nothing. He didn't help. He just bossed everybody around to find shelter, make their shelter, find food, and they were the ones that were going around and doing all of this. While Rock sat back and watched, he explained that they looked like ants, which you guessed it is what happens to name this case the Ant Hill Kids. He made everybody wear the same stuff. He would ration out people's food, but not for himself. He got to have as much as he wanted and he would give people new names. Like Rock would give people not their birth names, like say for instance, somebody's name was Joe, he would call them completely something else, like something in the Bible. So these names, like I said, were based off of biblical names and Rock named himself Moses. People were supposed to respect and call him that. 
Brock also wanted every single woman as his wife so that he could marry them and have sex with them. Red flag number five. I don't know why cult leaders do that. Cult leaders are so stupid and sick. I don't get it. There were only nine women who had ended up following Rock from this church, but in the end, there was around 22 children. So around two to three per wife, basically. No men were allowed to have sex. Only Rock could have sex. Nobody was allowed to drink. Only Rock could drink, which is like the Seventh Day Adventist Church said that you couldn't drink, and then you... You said that's fine, so you stopped drinking and now you're starting drinking again? I don't get it. By the way, this is also in the 1970s, which is also when Jonestown was taking place. Jonestown ended up, I don't want to say finishing, but Jonestown concluded in November of 1978, and it is said that Rock was following this case and possibly gaining some inspiration from it, which Jonestown is a case later on. Also, remember last cult video, The Order of the Solar Temple? Waco had just happened, so all of this is kind of taking place around the same time. Not like this cult in particular, because like Waco and Order of the Solar Temple was like in the 90s, but it's just weird that like they all kind of happen, some, some kind of happen really close together. That's why I think it's weird. Rock banned the followers from reaching out to any friends or any family or if they went to the store from even talking to people in the store. He was very, very, very strict on that. And unless Rock allowed it while they were in the commune, they weren't even allowed to speak to each other. So February of 1979 is when the apocalypse was supposed to happen. And of course, when March of 1979 comes around and nothing happens, People start to question it and what that means and why why did the world not end? We prepared all this time for it. Like, it's March. And Rock didn't say, haha, gotcha, I was just seeing if y'all were devoted and prepared and stuff. Rock actually made these followers believe that God's time is different from our time. So the dates can get mixed up. So maybe, maybe it's coming later in God's February of 1979, not our time. Rock started to notice that there were people who were wanting to leave the commune. It, and I don't know if it was because they didn't believe in what he was saying anymore, or if they just wanted to leave in general because this life was not good. But Rock didn't like the fact that he was losing control and losing these followers. So what did he do? He started physically punishing them. This is one of those times that I say, prepare yourself for this next part. It only gets worse from here. When he suspected there was an individual that was trying to leave the commune, he would inflict physical harm with either a hammer or a belt, or sometimes he would suspend somebody from the ceiling and make all of the followers pluck every single hair that was on them out of their body. The violence didn't stop, however. He somehow got this weird high from it and really enjoyed doing this to his loyal and devoted followers. So he would find new ways of physical punishment or just completely em embarrass them. New ideas would insist of defecating on his members or even making them break their own legs and their own bones with sledgehammers. Rock wanted that loyalty back that he had in the beginning. So in order for them to prove their loyalty where they would stop having pain inflicted on them, he would make members cut off other members' toes. Other times, these members would have to sit on hot stoves. It didn't say if they had received medical care from all of this, but where would they go? They were completely isolated from civilization. Rock did not leave the children out of this punishment either. Rock was a father to most of the children on this commune. There were children prior to this that ended up leaving with their moms and dads when they first initially followed him, but he didn't leave them out either. He would sexually abuse these children, and a lot of them were his. Rock would nail children by the back of their shirt on a tree and have the other kids pick up stones and rocks and throw them at this kid who was nailed to this tree. And the, the kids did this. They didn't know any better. They just... They didn't know what they were doing, and obviously if they have an adult telling them what to do, they don't know if that's right or wrong because most kids listen to what adults tell them to do out of respect. I, I just, I don't know. 
The abuse goes on, and in 1981, cops were alerted about the Ant Hill kids and what was going on. This next story is kind of really hard, so again, prepare yourself. There's a guy named Guy Via who ended up joining the cult, and he was given the role babysitter. So this man would babysit pretty much all of the kids that were on this commune. Guy was not a very gentle person. He was very violent and physically abusive to the kids whenever he would watch them. Guy, I know this is hard, his name is Guy. Guy ended up beating one of the boys so severely that something happened to where this boy could not urinate properly. He was beaten that bad. And Rock, remember, he doesn't like medical professionals. He believed that he could perform surgery on this boy and heal him and fix this problem. This was not organic foods and grape juice. This was actual surgery. Rock has no medical practice, no degree. He has no way of being able to properly heal this boy, but he had his beliefs that he could. He's never performed surgery in his life, but he said that God has given him the way and the need and the knowledge of how to do this correctly and how to heal this boy. This child did not survive this surgery. Rock did not have any anesthetics. He made the boy drink rubbing alcohol so that he could perform this surgery. That could be the initial cause of death because you're not supposed to drink rubbing alcohol, especially a child. It didn't say what the exact cause of death was. It even could have been from bleeding out in the surgery because Rock didn't know what he was doing. But all in all, the child did not survive. Rock did not believe that he was responsible for this death at all. He would not even be in this situation if Guy hadn't had beat this boy up. Rock had convinced all of his followers that Guy really needed to be punished. And what did they conclude? Castration. If you don't know what castration is, it's the removal of a man's testicles. Rock was not about to make the same mistake twice. Not that Rock couldn't even perform the correct surgery, but he said it was because he didn't get written consent to do so before he performed the surgery. So Rock made Guy sign a consent form basically saying that he was allowing Rock to castrate him. Rock only needed four instruments to perform those surgeries. And what were those? A magnifying glass, a rubber band, a razor, and tweezers. Here's the thing. I don't have a medical degree. I don't. Um, but I, I feel like you need way more than that to perform a castration. And that's just my opinion. Guy, some in some miracle, survived this surgery. He obviously did lose a quite a bit of blood, but he was given more iron in his diet to help him. Um, but still, Guy survived, but he was not about to let this go at all. He actually ended up escaping very shortly after this. Guy alerted authorities about what Rock was doing to the Ant Hill kids and about the death of the boy because of Rock's surgery that he believed he could heal him and then also what had happened to him to be castrated, which authorities were kind of hesitant to believe because this was such an unheard of case that they didn't really know if they could believe him. Rock was arrested due to the death of this little boy and around 20 children were taken from the commune and rehomed for their own safety. Rock only served 14 months for criminal negligence, not murder, and he actually arrived back home to the commune to find all of his followers still there and still devoted to him. Like, what the hell? You literally had 14 months to get away from him. You could have escaped. You could have left. But you didn't. Why? Rock did not want to stay in the same place that authorities knew what was going on with the Ant Hill kids, so he packed up him and his followers and they moved to an isolated place in Ontario. Rock did not receive any help while he was in prison, nor did he change at all. He ended up getting pretty much the same or way, way, way worse. He would make his followers fight like gladiators. He would have competitions with the women to see who could orgasm the most. And this guy was just a piece of shit. Rock had another baby, but he absolutely hated this baby. 
and he had convinced his wife that the baby came from the devil so this baby was left outside in one of the coldest nights in a wheelbarrow and ended up freezing to death he had convinced his wife that this was true and she believed him so she just followed what he said to do somehow it didn't say or if it did i couldn't find it but authorities found out about the death of this baby and how it was left um in the wheelbarrow so they went and they raided and completely took all of the children out of the commune and rehomed them for their own safety the remaining followers had started to come up with a plan of how they were going to escape and it's like i'm not victim blaming but you had 14 months uh, completely away from rock so i don't understand why they didn't do it then but now they wanted to leave and live a normal life that was not full of chaos anymore Giselle, which was Rock's wife, remember whenever he cheated on Francine with Giselle? They're still married. Giselle was actually one of the members who had tried to escape, and when Rock found this out, he threw a hunting knife at her, which ended up in her thigh, and it wasn't good. The knife was in her thigh so deep that it just started to immediately pour blood out of her leg and it ended up creating a huge blood clot which Rock believed that he could fix and heal this. He opened up the wound and pressed a red hot iron against the wound to seal it up. Over the course of the next several days while Giselle's wound was trying to heal, she was planning another attempt to escape but was unsuccessful. She just believed things were getting way too out of hand and she needed to get the hell out of there. This next part is very dark regarding recent things that have happened in our government so please, please be cautious of this next part. Rock was a complete psychopath at this point. He was starting to inflict even worse pains on his followers. There was one wife who was pregnant and he caused her to miscarry by punching her repeatedly in the stomach. Another time he had used a blowtorch on one of his wife's backs just because he wanted to see the skin bubble. Y'all, this man was psychotic. Men didn't go untortured either, by the way, and I don't even know if it was for punishment or just pure enjoyment at this point. Rock had made some of the women break one man's leg with a sledgehammer, break all of his toes, and he pulled out 11 of this man's teeth just with a small pair of pliers, and this man went through some really dark torture. Rock was not finished though. He made the followers go off and he tied a rubber band as tight as he could around this man's testicles just to see what would happen. One of the man's testicles was so tight that it had swollen to the size of a softball and Rock wanted to perform a surgery on this. That was the reason why he did this. Rock had made an incision on this man's scrotum and had removed the enlarged testicle and sealed it up by pressing and sealing a red hot iron against the wound. He survived, but not without irreparable damage. Rock was enjoying these surgeries so much because now he has had two men survive. He's had two deaths and two men survive, so odds are he's okay, I guess, in his mind. In 1999, there was a woman named Solange that had started to explain that she was having abdominal pain and stomach pains. Rock explained that he could heal her and fix her with a surgery. I, I couldn't read if she was okay with this or if she just, she couldn't do anything about it, but he ended up performing this surgery on her. Rock had placed a very large plastic tube through Solange's rectum and started to repeatedly punch her in the stomach and pour olive oil through this tube. He then started pouring molasses down the same tube with the olive oil and cut open her stomach and started to pull the intestines out of her with his bare hands. Solange did not wake up from the surgery, but it didn't even stop there. Rock and them had buried her body, but Rock had explained that there was a reoccurring dream that he was having that God was telling him that he had the power to resurrect her. And so he had got the group together because he was going to have this resurrection ceremony. Let me please warn you on this next part. I know that I've given warnings and this case has been so bad just in general, but this part, 
makes me so nauseous and when I was researching this I started to like literally cry and I was like dry heaving gagging so please please just fast forward the next 20 seconds Rock didn't just start praying or saying nonsense to bring her back to life. What Rock did was he made his followers watch him cut a hole into her skull where her brain was exposed and he masturbated into this hole until he ejaculated and his ejaculation, his sperm into her brain was going to bring her back to life. This is how she was going to live. This man is absolutely sick. Solange obviously did not come back from the dead and they had cremated her and he put her ashes into a jar and still continued to ejaculate into this jar because he believed that he really could bring her back to life. But before this, Rock had tore off one of her rib bones and he wore it around as a necklace. Authorities were not alerted from this death, but things were about to come to an end due to a lady named Gabrielle. Gabrielle was about to undergo some of the most horrifying torture yet, I know, I know, and she was about to drop a load on the authorities that would get the Ant Hill kids immediately shut down. Gabrielle had suffered from eight teeth being pulled from her head, a welding torch near her genitals, and even had a needle broke off in her back that Rock had just like placed into her and then hit the needles where the needle was lost inside of her back. This was before she tried to escape and it got worse after she tried to escape. Rock had hit her with the blunt side of an ax in the head and then proceeded to cut parts of her breast off. This is the most horrifying part of this case. I have gen I have genuinely never heard of anything this horrible in my life, so just, okay. Um, Gabrielle had suffered some of the worst trauma yet that her uterus had actually collapsed and started to come out of her vagina. Rock had tied a string around it and tried to pull it out of her as if it was like a loose tooth on a kid that you pull out. That's what he was trying to do and of course this didn't work. She needed real and true medical attention and she did go receive it, but she went back to the commune. And I know, I'm sorry, I was trying so hard to keep it together that last part. I refilmed it like I think 10 times, I, that is one of the worst things I have ever heard of. And I know that I haven't researched every single case that's ever happened, but for me, I literally, like, I literally couldn't even sleep that night because I was thinking about it, like mental images. It is the worst thing I've ever heard of. And this really happened. Gabrielle did successfully escape, but this was just the icing on the cake that made her leave. Rock had pinned Gabrielle's finger down with a hunting knife and then left for about 45 minutes, which caused her arm to turn blue. When Rock returned, he had a meat cleaver and he repeatedly chopped at her arm until it completely amputated and it was said that she didn't even scream. She was completely silent this whole time. Gabrielle miraculously survived this. In a later interview, she explained that at that moment, the reason why she was silent was because she had accepted the fact that she was going to die that night. But she escaped and ended up making it to a hospital where they phoned the police. Rock knows that Gabrielle had escaped and had probably went to authorities, so it was only a matter of time until they came and caught him. It actually took the police around six weeks to find Rock, and he had been on the run for that long. Six weeks. They finally did catch him after the long six weeks and arrested him. He was arrested for the assault on Gabrielle, but authorities didn't even realize what they were about to come up with with other charges against him. They didn't know about any of the tortures, any of the abuse, or any of the deaths on this commune. 
1989, Rock was sentenced to 12 years in prison for the assault of Gabrielle, along with other members who had participated in this torture. In 1989, Rock was sentenced to 12 years in prison for the assault of Gabrielle, along with other members on the commune who had participated in her torture. When police got to the commune and did some investigating, they found out about the murder of Solange. Rock was sentenced to life in prison for the second degree murder. I know second degree murder of Solange, which this murder was not premeditated, so I don't think that they could have given him the first degree murder charge. In a way, he was trying to save her. Like, in his sick mind, he believed he was saving her. It She ended up passing because of it. I don't know. Like, you want to you wanna give him the death penalty. I don't know why he wasn't given it. I don't know if Canada even has that. While Rock was in prison, he still had three devoted and loyal wives. He ended up having four children while he was still in prison. Like, I don't fucking know. But Jesus Christ, how? How? Why are they, how? So, since Rock's in prison, um, in 2009, he actually was still selling art out of his prison cell on a website called Murder Auction. One of his pieces of artwork ended up selling, and the caption was, Artwork from a crazy cult leader. But only two years later, in 2011, Rock Terrio was found dead in his prison cell at the age of 64 due to his cellmate murdering him. His cellmate ended up stabbing him in the neck. And that is the end of Rock Terrio and the Ant Hill Kids. Um, I couldn't find anything else after that. Um, so sorry that today's case was so awful and so rough. I, I personally don't know what to do. I don't, I don't know. This case is just, it's so sick and it's so awful. Like, I couldn't even imagine what people went through on that commune. Again, I'm sorry that today's case was so rough and I appreciate people who have stayed throughout the whole time. If you had to skip through some parts, I completely understand. It took me a long time to research this case because of how many awful things happened. So I completely understand. If you like my content and you want to see more of it, I do post every Thursday. So please make sure to like, subscribe, and tell your friends so that you don't ever miss an upload. Okay, I think that's it. This man is sick. We can all agree. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. And I will be sure to see you next Thursday, I hope. All right, bye.